ABC Listen. Podcasts, radio, news, music and more. I love golf. <laughs> I do. I've, I've, I've always loved it. Um, I, I played other sports growing up, but I just have always loved the sport. Tiger Woods ahead of the Masters. Look, lots of people love golf. The difference is it often loves Tiger back. Mighty field love one more time at Augusta. He's 48. The fact he's even walking, let alone competing, is a minor miracle. Yet, Tiger believes, which is very Tiger. And what are the Australians in the mix, like Minwoo Lee, Cam Smith and Jason Day? Might they find a nice new green jacket? We're speaking to a man who has finished top five at Augusta twice, Mark Leishman, to unpack all the Masters goodness. I'm Patrick Stack. This is ABC Sport Daily. Masters Week is golfing Christmas, and a man who has finished top five at Augusta twice and top ten thrice is Mark Leishman. Mark, can you just start by describing the experience of playing the most fabled tournament in golf and what it's meant to your career overall? Yeah, well, it's definitely a uh, you know a really fun event to be a part of. You know, the first one that you play is a bit of a wash. You sort of the week flies by, and you know you kind of wear yourself out playing the golf course so much because it's one that you've you've seen on TV your whole life, and then you're just so excited to be there that you're almost uh, worn out before you start the tournament. So once you get that out of the way, you know the experience. Is, is pretty awesome when you can just treat it like a normal golf tournament. And, um, you know, I've been lucky enough to play well there a few times. So it's a, certainly an enjoyable place to, to play. And all time, there have been 14 Eagles at this par four in Masters history. Kevin Chappell had the 14th on Saturday. And Leishman, you know it's going in, has number 15 today. You know, one that I certainly have will miss being there this year, but you know, hope to get back there in the future. Really interested to get your insights on the, some of the Australians in the mix. And your good mate Cam Smith's been battling illness as he prepares for Augusta. A bit of food poisoning at the start of last week and probably just tried to do a little bit too much and our body just kind of shut down on me and yeah, spent the weekend in the bed, which wasn't the greatest preparation, but I was just saying that today's probably the first day where I feel like I've got a little bit of energy. I'm, I'm sure I'll be pretty cooked tonight. But I mean, how do you think he's travelling, and do you get the sense that his game is where it needs to be to possibly be in the mix to claim a green jacket? I mean, yeah, Cam's game's definitely in a really good spot. Um, we played a few practice rounds together last week before he got sick. We're not sure sort of what was going on there with his, with his illness, but I'm sure he'll be ready and ready to go this week. You know, he's, well, his whole game now, it's not really just his short game anymore. It's everything. is world-class, and, and he's got the head on his on his shoulders to go along with it. Yeah, game feels good. I was just saying to Gary, probably a, a few weeks there at the start of the year, we're um, trying to address some stuff in the swing and just felt a little bit uncomfortable and just hard to commit on you know, some really tough driving courses, to be honest. So it was good to play nice in, in Hong Kong and kind of know that it's still there. And I'm expecting some good things from Cam, but, you know, not only Cam, you know, the other Aussie boys are all in pretty good form too. One of those is Jason Day. He is being paired with perennial story Tiger Woods. It feels like he is always the headline coming into Augusta. And it was awesome to hear Jason having the news broken to him by the Australian press pack that he was going to get that honour. I, I, I had no idea. That's not, so that's exciting. I'm, ha- I'm happy about that. That's a good pairing. Yeah, that's, I, just, I had no idea. It was harrowing to hear Tiger talk about his ongoing physical pain. Uh, I heard every day. Yeah. <laughs> so, Please, yes, I, 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 I ache. No, I, I ache every day. Despite all that, he still thinks he can win this tournament aged 48. I mean, how physically demanding is the Augusta course and what chance do you give him? You never count Tiger out. It's, uh, it's one of those courses that the experience counts for, for a whole lot. A lot of the places are, that you can hit it around that golf course you don't really know how bad it is until you hit it there in the tournament. Yeah, I think it's, well, it's consistency, it's longevity, and it's a understanding of how to play this golf course. And you know, the more tournaments you play, the more you learn and um, you know where to hit it and where not to hit it for certain pins. And um, you know, Tiger always hits it really well. Um, it's a matter of his, well, his, his body now, I guess. As far as my physicality on certain shots... Every shot that's not on the tee box is, uh, <laughs> is, a, is a challenge. So, 
yeah, once, once we start the hall, it's, it's a bit of a challenge. But it's, it, it is a taxing course, um, not only for, for the walk, but probably more so for him is for the, you know, the uneven lies he'll encounter. And that puts stress on, on your, your lower body. And, you know, hopefully he can hit it in some flat spots and it'd be good to see him contending. The challenge of being paired with him, I imagine it must be a unique one. I mean, you've lived the experience. You did that in 2018. Didn't seem to bother you. You finished ninth. Leishman. Oh, he's tried to go long. And if it doesn't come back down, how brave was that? Wow. That was unbelievable. Talk oh, about stops. a thin margin. A little higher up, closer to where Tiger was, he would have come back down. I mean, it strikes me as an extra challenge for Jason Day. What's that experience like? Yeah, I mean, it's a great experience. I, I love playing with Tiger, you know, particularly at the big event. Obviously, the Masters is probably as big as it gets. You know, the, the nervous energy is already there. Um, so, you know, playing with Tiger is not really, you know, any added extra pressure because there's already pressure on you from playing, the, you know, one of the biggest tournaments of the year. But it's, it's fun. I remember I was either leading or, or one back. Um, after two rounds when I played with him. So, uh, you know, lucky enough to play well and, you know, had some, have some really good memories from those two days playing with him. Back to seven. Leishman. Par. Oh, that was well done. Punched out from the trees. Got it about seven feet away. Makes the putt and he stays at five under. But, you know, it's something that I know him and Jace are pretty good friends and I know Jace will really embrace it and um you know he's got a great record around Augusta as well so it wouldn't surprise me to see him right up there Min Woo Lee okay the chef he wants to cook he's a fan favorite we've seen him in the mix at majors in recent times I imagine that experience is invaluable he has broken his right ring finger which he said he's had a really positive recovery from yeah uh honestly it's it's actually amazing how fast the recovery was uh it was bruised it's still swollen but um, not actually that painful, which is really strange. Somehow, somehow recovering very good. But to have to deal with that extra, I guess, adversity, how do you see his chances uh, at Augusta National? Yeah, it's probably one of the worst for oh, three or four fingers you could break. I actually just gripped the club when you said the right ring finger, and that's that's going to be painful for him. Um, particularly, you know, it, it is a big golf course, and there's a lot of drives that you have to, you know, give a bit of a rip. So, I mean, again, Minwoo is a great player. You know, I'm sure there's painkillers and all that that you can take to kind of get rid of some of that pain, and you know, it might extend the, the injury a little bit. But this is one of those weeks that you're um, you're certainly willing to do that. I can hear when you talk about this tournament, it's one that you, you know, you're really passionate about. When it seemed that the so-called Live PGA truce was announced last year, did you think, hey, one of the real benefits of this is I'm going to be right back in the mix at some point for Augusta? Um, I honestly didn't really enter my mind. I was, you know, not really taking too much notice of all the uh all the noise with the, the merger and all that just sort of I was one of those things I wouldn't really I wasn't going to believe until I saw it so um, yeah we'll see what what ends up happening but you know I can still qualify for the US Open and the, and the British Open so I'm hoping I can do that and you know have a good finish and get back into the majors that way so I think my world rankings I don't even know what my world ranking is to be honest but yeah, I think that's sort of that ship sailed with uh, getting in through that but yeah hopefully I can get in an, another way because it's certainly a tournament that I dearly love to play. And I reckon it's a tournament Australian golf fans would dearly love to see you playing. It's a tricky question, but is this the week of the year where you watch the action and there's an element of what if or even tinged with regret? No, no, not at all. I mean, I had, I think I played, I got into 11 Masters. I only played 10 because my wife got sick that one year. But, you know, I had 11 cracks at it. And Leishman, also well over the back. Players struggling to get a beat on the wind with this tee shot. Oh, he's judged this nicely. Oh, he's judged this nicely. What a great shot from Mark Leishman. Had my chances, couldn't take them. And obviously, Liv came along at a, at a pretty good time in my career, and there was way too many positives to, uh, to turn that down. So certainly no regrets. You know, yes, I do miss being there, but I, I also enjoy watching it on TV and pulling the, for the Aussie boys. But, um, yeah, no, certainly no regrets. It's been a little over a year and a half since you joined Liv. How's it changed your life? Mark? Um, well, I mean, you know, my relationship with my kids, I guess, um, that's, that's improved a lot. And, and my wife, not that either of them were, were bad by any means. I had great relationships before, but, you know, not traveling sort of 26 to 30 weeks a year 
Um, you know, only doing 17 events, I believe, I played last year. And to keep the outright lead. Oh, yeah. Oh. Strong stuff there. It's a lot more time at home. It's a lot more time to be a dad. You know, obviously still getting paid really well. And I've enjoyed the last year and a half as, as much as any stage of my career. So, yeah, been been loving it. I would say that you know, it hasn't really changed my life. I've just, I'd just say my relationships have gotten better. I've been able to spend more time with family and friends. Live Adelaide last year was one of the most raucous golfing scenes I've ever seen. We're preparing for the sequel. Can you tell me the place it holds among the Live players when they talk about playing various events? Yeah, I mean, Adelaide's it, really. You know, obviously the Spanish boys love, love playing Valderrama. The, you know, the Majestics and the English boys love, love playing in London. Everyone loves playing in Australia. Tiff's got the 12. The watering hole is posing. Honestly, one of the greatest golf tournaments I've ever been a part of last year. Just the, the atmosphere and obviously the, the crowds are amazing. The golf course, everything about it. You know, it's real. It's real entertainment. You could go there never having seen a golf shot. Kind of, I compare it to the the horse racing a little bit. I'm not into horses at all, but you go there and have an, have a great day. And well, that's kind of how live golf is. You know, you go there. There's other things to do. There's a concert. There's other sorts of entertainment. And it's just a it's just a great day. And um, you know, everyone who went there that was sort of in my circle just had an absolute ball and uh, can't wait to get back there. You're getting a view that not many in the world of golf are getting of some of these guys who are going to compete at the Masters this weekend. Outside of the Australians, who do you think's the best chance of bringing a green jacket potentially to Adelaide for the live event? Yeah, there's a, there's a few, I think. Probably uh, like Joaquin Neiman. He's been playing really well, and you can see he's, he's working on some shots the, you know, the last few weeks. For this week, um, just it, it's one of those things you can't just decide you're going to start hitting draws or you know a certain shot the the Monday of a tournament. You have to work on it in the months leading up, and uh, that's that's what I used to do. That's what I've seen him doing. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if he did really well. And John Rahm, uh, I played with him on Sunday. He's hitting it long. He's hitting it pretty straight, uh, and he's and his putters on. So it also wouldn't surprise me to see him go back to back. We're looking forward to Augusta. We're looking forward to seeing you back in Australia playing golf. Mark Leishman, thanks so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries at all. Anytime. Headlines. Things I like about Mexico. Margaritas. Tacos. Vibrant culture. Frida Kahlo. Spring break in Cancun-based reality TV. And the fact they just lost to Australia in football. The Matildas might have been missing bulk stars, but they still made light work of Mexico as they tuned up for the Paris Olympics. Hayley Razzo and Caitlin Ford scored as the Aussies beat their Central American opponents 2-zip. Ford's goal was probably the pick of the pair. Hayley Razzo's goal in the ninth minute, the difference, but perhaps Ford can add number two. Here she will. Classic Caitlin Ford. Cutting in from the left-hand side. A little shimmy, a feint. And then steering the ball inside the far post. The AFL has suspended Port's Jeremy Finlayson for three games over his homophobic slur in the clash with Essendon. The 28-year-old will also have to attend and pay for an education workshop. It does seem inconsistent compared to the two-match suspended ban and $20,000 fine handed to Kangas coach Alistair Clarkson for a similar incident in a pre-season clash. I feel like we might hear more about that as the week rolls on. We covered the growing crisis at South Sydney on Monday with Andrew Moore. Take a listen. Good conversation about what's gone wrong for one of the biggest clubs in Aussie sport, but kind of off topic because the latest development is that they have dropped star hooker Damian Cook for a clash with Cronulla that could decide whether coach Jason Demetrio stays or goes. Meanwhile, competition heavyweight Brisbane will welcome back dreamy fullback Reese Walsh. A facial fracture was meant to have kept him out for six weeks. He's missed just two games. Beautiful and tough. I'm Patrick Stack. This is ABC Sport Daily, produced by Poppy Penny. Thanks to Fox Sports, Live Golf, The Masters and Channel 10 for the extra audio used in this episode. Discover more great ABC podcasts, live radio and exclusives on the ABC Listen app.